What is going on guys? My name is Ben. How are you guys doing today? And what I'm going to be showing you guys in this video is how to upgrade uh, a PC from an older operating system to a newer operating system. In this case, I'm upgrading the uh, Dell Inspiron 518, which currently is shipped with Windows Vista, and I'm going to be upgrading it to Windows 7. Now, why am I doing this? Well, this PC belonged to one of my relatives, and, um, um you know, uh, he said it was going slow, so he wanted to upgrade it, and I was like, you might as well just upgrade to a newer operating system, um, so that way you kind of got the extra speed right there, and he says, yeah, true, and then ended up, we kept talking about it, and he, he agreed that, he, or, I'm sorry, he decided that you know, he wants Windows 7 on there, and then he asked me to install for it, and I said, okay, so that is what I'm going to be doing in this video today. Now, keep in mind, this process applies for uh, uh, most computers out there, whether you have an HP, Sony, uh, whatever, running, you know, whether Windows XP or uh, Vista uh, to Windows 7, and uh, so the process is pretty much the same thing, because either way, this is a clean install. You have to erase everything that is currently on your hard drive, so make sure you back it up. Now, what are you going to need in this process is you're going to need an external hard drive or external storage device, whatever, because you're going to back up all your data on it first. Because, like I said, you are going to lose everything. You have to completely erase the hard drive. All right? Second, you're going to need your Windows 7 installation disk. And you have to figure out what type of operating system you're running, whether it's 32-bit or 64-bit. And then, number three, you need your product key, which most Windows 7 operating system, uh, you know, packages, it should come with a product key in there. You need that product key in order to activate Windows. And uh, they'll give you 30 days uh, and uh, for you to put your product key in there, and if you have not put in a product key within those 30 days, after 30 days, then it's going to disable some of the Windows features, or it won't just let it won't let you access Windows if you have you have not put a product key in there. It won't let you access Windows until you put a product key in there. I know that is the case for Windows XP, Windows 7. You have to wait until after 30 days. All right, uh, and what else do you need? No. That is pretty much it, unless if I'm missing something, but from what I remember from doing this, I actually already did this process, I'm just making the video right now. Uh, that's pretty much all I needed. Now, you could manually back up your stuff by click and drag uh, manually or copy it, or you can use a program called Windows Easy Transfer, and then you transfer all your stuff uh, onto the hard drive, and it puts it all into one big file. Now, if you're running Windows XP or Windows Vista, your operating, those operating systems did not come with Windows Easy Transfer. It did come with Windows 7 and I believe Windows 8. I'm not 100% sure about that. I'm pretty sure it is. But Windows XP or Windows Vista, you have to download it. And all you have to do is download it directly from Microsoft's website, which the link will be in the description below so you guys can download it. And then, of course, if you're upgrading from an older operating system to... No, Windows 7, in this case, you'll have to download the Windows 7 Upgrade Assistant uh, in order to identify what is compatible with Windows 7 or you know, what's not compatible. So, for example, it's going to tell you, okay, you need this, this, this to support aerospace. You need this amount of RAM to support Windows 7. Okay, this program does not work with Windows 7. This program, we don't have any information on it. This program, we have information that it is compatible with Windows 7 and this is a really neat tool so that way you can get all this stuff done that's not compatible before you upgrade and I will be showing you guys how that works and then I will show you uh, an example of the spec sheet uh, by taking a look at the Dell Inspiron 518 so without further ado let's get on to the installation process alright guys so let me launch up uh, a program called the Windows 7 Upgrade Advisor and there will be a link in the description below this is a official program made by Microsoft and you download this to uh, identify uh, if your PC is compatible with Windows 7 or not uh, this is for both Windows Vista uh, and uh, Windows XP so 
yeah, you, you can go either way uh, when using this program. Alright, so this program is on and we're going to hit start check and then just let it do its thing. Alright, so after you have checked if your PC is compatible with Windows 7 or not, all you're going to do is you put in your Windows 7 boot DVD. Now, you could uh, install Windows 7 just being uh, in the Windows Vista operating system itself or Windows XP, whatever, but I'm going to be doing this uh, uh, as by booting from the DVD. So, what I'm actually going to be doing is I'm going to insert the DVD and I'm going to shut off the computer, get into the BIOS, and make sure that it, it boots from the DVD as the first device to boot from. So, I got it all right here, and I'm going to go ahead and shut down. Or, we can re actually, you can restart it too. Yeah. Now, for this particular PC, yeah, you have to push the F2 key, the Dell Inspiron 518. So you just push the uh, F2 key to boot into the BIOS on the first screen you see. And I can tell that it's reading the disk right now, but I'm restarted the computer. Now this is going to wipe out everything since I am doing a clean install. So uh, just do the, your usual thing. Make sure all your files are backed up to an external drive, disk, whatever. Uh, anything that holds storage pretty much. And just make sure everything is safe because this will completely wipe out everything. Entering setup is right there. Alright, so now this is the BIOS right here, so every BIOS will look different, but in this particular BIOS, you just go to boot device configuration, and you see where it says first boot device, it says hard disk, you're going to hit on that, and you're going to hit CD-ROM, and then we'll just make the second one um, hard disk. And for this, I have no idea why this is here, so I'll just put this as removable. All right, so first boot device is CD-ROM, as we, as you can see here, hard disk, removable, and then boot other. All right, I'm gonna hit F10 to save these. It's already in Y, and now it'll boot from the DVD. Press any key to boot from DVD. Windows is loading files right now. Alright, so English, United States, US. I'm going to hit next. And I'm going to hit I accept. Now, sometimes you'll get a screen where it'll ask you to upgrade or do a custom install. If you're doing a clean install, you're going to do a custom. Uh, in my opinion, I always think that's the best way. Uh, and then you'll end up to the screen. But in my case, I just ended up to the screen. Now, you have drive options right here. You can format uh, uh, your hard drive, but what I'm actually going to do is delete every partition. I'm going to delete this as well, and then let Windows 7 create its own thing. You don't have to do this. You can just format it. For me, I want to uh, delete it. Then I'm going to hit next. And this is going to take a while, so just let it sit here uh, and it'll boot by itself later, later into the setup. And I will be back once this is done. Alright guys, so while the Dell Inspiron 518 is installing Windows 7 from the boot DVD, what we're going to be doing on a, a working computer, a functional computer that already has an operating system installed, is find the drivers for the particular computer you're looking at or uh, excuse me that you're working on because 
once you install Windows 7 and you boot, get into the operating system, you are not done yet. You have to make sure that every driver is installed uh, properly, and if some drivers are not installed, then you're going to install those manually. Now, what are drivers? Drivers are pretty much install files uh, that installs any hardware uh, that's inside your computer, such as like the sound device or the video card, uh, the Ethernet device, you know, any hardware that's built into your motherboard and possibly some external uh, hardware that you have connected. Otherwise, you would just use the original disk that came with those hardware devices. And what I did in order to uh, find the drivers is I, I just searched up here in Google Dell Inspiron 518 drivers. It should say Windows 7, but I researched it again and on Google's official website. And then they gave me a list of drivers right here, compatible uh, operating systems. Uh, you know, there are some right here, Windows 7, 64-bit, because that's the one that I need to install. Uh, because in case Windows 7 doesn't install the drivers, like all the drivers, then uh, I'm not worried about it, because I'll have some uh, that I need to install manually. And then you just got to download it. Keep in mind that it may be different for you, depending on what computer you're working on, what manufacturer it is. If it's HP, then obviously HP is not going to look like this. If it's Acer, you know, again, not going to look like this. Sony, Samsung, whatever. I can go on and on, but, you know, not every place to get your drivers will be the same. And unless you can find the drivers from a third-party website, you you should most likely refer to the manufacturer of your computer's website. All right, so I just got back and this was happening. It must be finalizing the installation right now. Setup is updating registry settings. Yep, so it's just finalizing it now. Hmm. So my screen resolution changed. It looks like it installed the video card that's built into the motherboard of this computer. Of course, there's no dedicated video card in there. It's just plugged straight into the VGA port on the motherboard. So, it looks like it already readjusted itself. It said setup will continue after restarting your computer. Alright, so Dell's launching up again. Now, I, this is the second time I'm doing this except on a different PC. Okay, when it says boot from the CD, don't push any key. Just let it keep going by itself. And then we will boot straight into the Windows 7 setup. Now, as I was saying before, I wasn't sure when it was finalizing the installation if there was another screen and that said boot from CD. But if it does say that, then uh, again, don't push the keys. Let it get back into the Windows 7 installation screen in order to complete the installation. And as you just saw, once it's installed already, and it says to boot from CD or DVD, don't push any keys either. All right, just let it sit there and get into the Windows 7 setup. Setup is checking video performance. Alright, so there you go. Now we are going to uh, set up Windows 7. Do I want a password or does he want a password? No. So I'm just going to hit next. And for now, I'll have it set to use recommend set recommended settings. But once I let it update everything, I'm going to set it to never update. The reason why I'm doing that is so that way if for some reason the owner shuts off his computer and uh, it was installing something, that could corrupt the hard drive. That That's what happened to another laptop I was fixing for somebody. All of a sudden, it just wouldn't boot into Windows. And then we tried reinstalling Windows onto the hard drive and it did not take it at all. So uh, it was a hard drive problem. And it's recommended that 
for Windows updates, you have it set to never update. You only update when you have to. Because when you shut off your computer and you don't know that it's updating, you corrupt your hard drive just like that. So, uh, if once you're done updating everything, then change it to never update. And plus, when you're in the middle of something, uh, it'll update and then you'll be prompted to restart your computer. Alright, so now we're in the operating system. I'm not sure we'll be prompted to restart again. That's what happened to another laptop I was installing on. Now, some Windows 7 boot DVDs, if you uh, got one and Service Pack 1 is not on there, then what you have to do is you have to download a, a, a file and then burn it onto a disk. And then all you do is just pop the disk in and then install Service Pack 1. The reason why you want to do that is because there are certain updates, like for example, Windows, uh, I mean, not Windows, Internet Explorer. This is an internet browser made by Microsoft and it's crappy, but you know, let's say if you use it and you want to update it, it'll give you a pop up message saying your operating system is not compatible with it because. Service Pack 1 is not installed, so you have to download the file, which a link will be in the description below. And all you do, it'll be made, downloaded as an ISO file, and all you have to do is click on the file. If you don't have WinRAR or any other boot DVD burner program installed, all you have to do is click on the file and then put a CD in there or a DVD. You just hit the burn button and then uh, it'll burn all the files that you need on there. Alright, so it looks like we're, we won't be prompted to restart again. Everything seems to be working fine. And now I'm just going to put some drivers on here. Before installing the drivers, if you guys have your product key that came with your Windows 7 installation disk, then uh, what you do in order to enter it, uh, compared to Windows XP, while you are setting up Windows XP or installing it, you'll be prompted to put in your product key and you don't then you can put it in later. In Windows 7, it doesn't seem like that. So what you do is go to the Start menu, then you go to Computer, right-click and hit Properties. And this will give you like all the specs of your computer and what operating system it's running, such as 6 gigs of RAM and all that, and it gives you your computer name and all that. And then you want to see where it says Dirty Days to activate or activate Windows Now. Uh, and of course, you just let this sit there for uh, more than a few days and it'll say like 29, 28, 27, whatever. You, you just click that and then you can hit activate Windows Online now and you can put in your product key right there. And if you don't uh, have your product key, then what you'll have to do uh, is uh, you, you can attempt to get a product key uh, from Microsoft somewhere. Uh, I'm not going to do that at this moment and as you can see the screen just blanked out because it it installed some updates and it wants me to restart so I'm going to do that and then once you let your computer restart this is actually what I was waiting for but once your computer restarts then you install your drivers on there and then that is pretty much it and that is a wrap for the Windows 7 installation process on the Dell Inspiron 518 and Again, this process pretty much works for most computers out there. As you can see, you just have to make sure that your CD drive is set as the first boot up device. So that way you can pop in your CD before the computer fully boots up and then it'll immediately boot into the disk. So that's it. Thanks so much for watching. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and leave them down in the comments down below. I will do my best to answer them and I will see you in the next one. Have you ever had an ad pop up or like when you click on a link and not only does it bring you to that link but also you get like a